Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do to place open coil spring. So open coil spring is meant to open space. So what we do, like for example right here where you have these teeth are uh, have brackets and are going to get a wire, there's not enough room for this tooth to line up here, so we want to push open space there, so that's what this open coil spring is for. So what you do is usually we'll act quote, activate at one bracket's width. So what that means is you'll take your um, you'll take your open coil spring right here, you'll hold it up to the side of one of the brackets. So what I would call for as the doctor is I would say, let's open coil spring that lower left one, because this is the lower left one right here, the one that's back, one bracket's width active. So then what you would do is you would say, okay, I would, you'd take the open coil spring, you'd touch it up against the side of one of these brackets here in that space, and then you clip it the, the extra width of one bracket. So you grab a hold of it, then you take it outside the mouth, you get a hold of it with both your fingers like this, and then you clip that. And so then what that does is when you hold that in here, it goes up against the side of one of the side and then there's one bracket's width of extra that's a teeny bit more than one bracket's width but uh, that what that does is then you then put it on the wire and you compress this spring and then it will push those apart until the spring is active and that opens up that much space for that tooth okay so to put the open coil spring in place you slide the spring onto the wire outside the patient's mouth like this and then you get the midline, the little line uh, that's on the wire, which is hard to see in this video, but trust me, it's there. You line that up with the midline on the arch, and then you'll put the spring where it should be. So first, I usually like to uh, hold the wire in place with an O-tie, so I'll get an O-tie like this, and then I'll put it on one of these that's not adjacent to the space. So I'll just put it on this one. So you get the little wire in there. Of course, you would put it through the six first, which I'll do that. So you'd put it through the six and the seven if it was on there. And then I'm going to hold it in place with an O-tie right up here. So you just put that on there nice and gently. And that's going to hold that wire in place while you're positioning this spring. So what you do is first you'll you want to steel tie on either side of this open coil because it's going to start to rotate those teeth and you don't want it to. So that open coil will counteract that rotation. It'll hold them nice and steady. So yeah, get your O tie or your pardon me your steel tie pre bent like that. Then you slide it on here nice and gently and you get that cinched up good. So when you put the steel tie on here, you want it on there snug, but you don't want to lock it down like insane or else the tooth can't slide over the wire. So you get it in there well, but you don't have to cinch it down like like your, your life depended on it. Just get it on there nicely and then you clip the excess and tuck that down. I won't do that right now for time purposes. I'll just clip the excess here. Leave about two or three millimeters so you have a good little tail to tuck down under the wire. And then what you'll do is on this one, you'll get your next O-tie ready, or pardon me, not O-tie, you'll get your next steel tie ready. So you'll, you'll get that all ready to go. And then what you'll do is you wanna compress the spring into that space. So you get you can either do it with your finger or you can do it with the tip of this or you can do it there's a little like forked tongue shape thing on the end of these called a ligature director you can get whatever you need to get but the idea is to compress the spring and get it down there between those two brackets this is usually easiest with a ligature director it looks like this it's like a little forked tongue and that allows you to go on either side of the wire and push this back so I'll hold it into place, you grab the lig director, and you push it back, and you just hold it in between 
the two teeth like that. And then you would take your little steel tie and you want to compress this back out of the way and you get that slit on there and you cinch that up real nice like. So again you cinch it up so it's nice and firm but you're not like locking it down like as if you're going to correct a rotation because this still has to slide along uh, the wire. If you get it too tight it like cinches it down and then it can't slide. So then you cut the excess off and then you would tuck both of these little loose ends down under the wire really well um, so that they're not going to poke anybody. Get that tucked under there really good. And so then what this is going to do is between now and next time this is going to push back open until it's passive again. So right now it was passive, then we compressed it, now it's active and it's going to push actively until it goes back to its normal size. And as it does, it'll open up space for this tooth right here. And once we have enough space for that tooth, we can get a bracket on there, that tooth then, once there's enough room, and then get it lined up. So that's how you use open coil spring. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do closed coil spring. So open coil spring, the little coils in the spring are open, so it's meant for pushing. Closed coil spring, as you can see, the coils are all touching, so it's just meant for holding space. So you would put this in if you had a space, you wanted to wear a chain on the wire, but there was a space that you didn't want to close. So you would put this flush between two brackets. So let's pretend that we're going to uh, do a closed coil spring right here on this one. Let's pretend for whatever reason, let's say this tooth is missing and we just didn't want this space to get any smaller as we chained other space closed. So what you would do is generally you want to use this flush, meaning that it goes from touching here to touching here and uh, to hold that space so those two brackets cannot get closer together when chain is pulling. So what you do is you hold this in here nicely, just like that, so it's touching one of those, and then you get this up here right next to the other one. So it's touching that bracket, and it's touching this bracket, and then I grab it with the lid cutters, and it's tough to do while filming. Okay, and then you pull this out of the mouth and then you clip it. Now sometimes when you clip it, the little coil will bend down in here and close that up or like go over the top of that where you need the wire to slide in. So if that's the case, just reach in there and clip that extra. There, it didn't happen this time, but sometimes it will. So you just gotta watch for that and clip that little piece that folds down over there. Okay, so to place the closed coil, slide it onto the wire. You get the wire started in the six and sevens back here. And then I will usually, first you make sure that this is going to fit in between there. You don't want it a little too long or you can't get it in there well. So you make sure that that fits in between those two brackets like that, which it does. And you want them touching both sides. If, it's, if we called for a flush close coil, that means touching both sides so no space can close. And so then what I'll do is I'll make sure your midline of your arch wire is lined up always. And then I'll put one O-tie over here just to kind of hold things in place. And then with these, since we're not actively closing, what you'll, what you'll do, usually you'll have this on when you have a chain. So then you would just put the chain on all the way around. You would skip a link right here. So you'd have one link on this bracket, one link hanging over the open coil or the closed coil spring, one link here. Uh, also, sometimes we'll steel tie each of these just to make sure that this is not going anywhere. So you can put steel ties on either side. That's usually the best way to do it. And then chain right over the top of that and skip a link where we put that closed coil spring so it doesn't pull too hard right there. And that's how you do a closed coil spring. Okay, this is a Kobe tie or a Kobe hook. 
So I'm going to show you how to use these. What they are for is some of the brackets have posts for putting elastics on, but these anterior brackets do not have posts. So here is, you'll see these front brackets don't have any posts on them. So if we need a post on, that's what these Kobe ties are for, or Kobe hooks. So what you do is, they're similar to a steel tie, except they have this little loop. They have a little solder or a tack weld right here that makes this loop at the end, and that's the little hook. So what you do is similar to an O-tie, you pinch them with your finger right here, double these ends over just like that, and then with a closed math out, you'll grab a hold right where they intersect. And so then you've got them like this, and you can kind of pinch that a little bit and put a slight bend in like that. And then usually we'll put them on the lower twos or the upper twos. So this is a lower two. So you get it on here like this, and then you just pull up. And you want, you'll see how it has this little bend in it right over here. You want that to sit right there. And so you'll come at it at kind of an angle so that that Kobe, the little loop, is kind of on the distal a little bit. And then you'll wind them up. You do this before you put the wire in. So this goes on the tie wings underneath where the wire slot would go. So you do these before you put the wire in. And you want to cinch that baby up like nobody's business. So that's why the natural bend of that wire when it starts, here I have another one, you'll see the natural bend of that wire. It has this little spot right here should go on the side of the bracket so that this rests on the corner, like the disto gingival corner. Kind of like, kind of like that. So then you want to wind this baby up like nobody's business because you don't want it to wiggle at all at all because these tend to loosen over time so you want to get this baby on there tight and so what you'll do to do that you kind of come at it at an angle like this and then I'll kind of wiggle it like this to work out any little slack and then you wind it up a little bit and then you wiggle it a little bit and you're you're gently pulling back you don't want to reef on it or it'll hurt or pull the bracket off but you pull back this way and kind of wiggle it a little bit and then you wind it up and you just want to make sure that there's no wiggle left by the time you're done. And you'll see this start to double over. You'll see it start to wind up. And that's when you know that thing is tight. So as long as there's no wiggle in it, when you move it like this, you're good. And then you can release it. And then you cut the excess off right up here. Leave maybe two or three, two millimeters-ish, about like that. Cut the extra off. And then you want to tuck this down in a way that it's not going to loosen it up. So if you're rotating it this way, like, like that, then you want to tuck it down in that same direction. If you fold it over this way, it wants to unwind it. So tuck it down like, like this, the same direction that you had uh, done it initially. <clears throat> so you can either tuck it up here along the tie wings. I prefer to tuck it down here so it's underneath the wire, and that way it's less likely to <clears throat> uh, bend up and cause issues later. So I'm going to trim just a touch more off of there. And then you'll tuck it down really nicely underneath where that wire is going to go. And you want to make sure, see it gets a little wiggly when you go to tuck that in. So that's why you want to get it really tight when you first get it down. And then just make sure that's in place. And then you can bend this down if you need to. So if that gets a little loose, which often they do, so it's a teeny bit wiggly right now, you can get back in there and grab a hold of that and just wind it up a little bit, like a half a turn is all. If you turn it several times, it can break the little steel. So anyway, you want to get that nice and snug and tuck that down, and that's a Kobe tie or a Kobe hook. 
if you realize that you need a Kobe tie or a Kobe hook on there after you have the wire all tied in, you can put these on after the wire is in, and this is how you do that. So you have all of this extra wire, you just want to trim a bunch of that off. So you take it to about here, and you just clip both those off. And then what you would do is you would thread this under the wire, like that. And once it was on there, then you would roll it over, grab it with your closed mouth out, and, and, and tighten it up just like I showed you before. So you don't have to have the wire out. If the doctor calls for this after the wire's in, you can still put one on without having to untie everything.